Today, friends, we're going to talk all things Tinkercad Tech. So let's get cracking. This is the website Tinkercad.com. You simply visit it. You do not have to install anything. I always choose sign in with Google. So you're up and running in minutes. Thanks for visiting HL Mod Tech today. Of course, there is a subscription button that's absolutely free. I'd also love to have you check out the memberships or my Patreon. Let's get into this text lesson, though. We're going to click right here on Create and choose 3D Design. This is where you name your file. I'm going to call this Text 101. And then these are the basic shapes we can play with. As you can see, this one is text. You can set it down and type whatever you want. Of course, if you want caps, make caps. You can stretch these, adjust them, change the height. It's that easy to adjust and make your fonts cool bring out another one. I'm going to just say hi. I also want to show you that these basic fonts have a bevel. So if you put a two and a segment of say one, notice it gives you a nice chiseled effect. If you change this to one, it instantly adjusts and even looks more cool. There's lots of fun stuff you can do. Notice it did bevel the bottom. You can bring out the whole cube, which will allow us to cut things off. Use these black handles to stretch it. Pick the height where you want to cut it off. And when you select two items and do group, which is also control G, bingo, you have cut that off. Well, now it's floating. Hit D and you drop it to what we call the work plane. So there are the basic text. Now there are other text. Let me show you if we type script, S-C-R, in the search command, you will get this script text. Notice I have the star filled in. That's because I made it a favorite. When you click and bring this out, it gives you eight different options that you can play with. You can click and switch instantly. Whatever you type in this text box is what shows up. So there's HL Mod Tech as stencil. I can instantly switch to technique and bam, it looks like that. Changing colors is as easy as clicking on the color you want to use. You can also make them a hole so you can cut them out of things. I'll show you that super quick. If we back up basic shapes, I'm going to bring out a cube. I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to make it lower. I'm going to make my keychain two millimeters thick. Then I'm going to click on these words and I'm going to do control up arrow to raise them up one millimeter. That's based on this snap grid. Then when we pull this in, I'm going to quickly align it. So I'm just selecting these two, choosing L for align, making the red one the boss, and bang, that is now centered. You can double check it by looking at it from the top. I'm going to put a hole out here, so I set this on the ground. Then I'm going to squeeze shrink to make it whatever size I want. I like size 5 for my keychain holes. And then I could grab this and squish it down. Let's make sure all of that is aligned. Select it, L for align, once again, boss and center, and then simply do control G to group. You have just made your first Tinkercad keychain. How cool is that? Of course, I want a different color just for fun. I'm gonna go with the light blue. All right, so a quick review. If we click on Yo, you can see we have four options. It also had the awesome bevel that let us do this. We have eight text options with the script tool. Notice if we click right here and we type text, there are other items we can play with. We've got the text ring. We've got Hebrew text. You've got text with new lines. This is the custom font text. And also right here, we have got the custom font text ring. So we'll get to these in a moment. Let me quickly show you this one. Once again, four choices, easy to click. Pick how thick you want it to be. Right now it's three millimeters. I'll just show you. If we click out here and type two, you'll see it get thinner. It has a text gap, which is between them. If we make this a little more, you can see it spreads them out. Text ring is handy. Don't forget you can also make it a hole so you can cut it into something. I am going to bring out the custom font text and I'm going to set it over here, but I'm not going to play with it yet. I want to show you one more thing that we can type. If you type curve and press enter, check it out. We get another set of curved text that goes this direction. So you can do it from the top. It gives you the option of changing your type. You can make it counterclockwise. You can change the arc to however much you want. If you want it to go further or less, do understand that you need to wait for this to load. 
This is where you change the radius so you make it wider or tighter. And then you can also bring in SVGs under 400 kilobytes as well. All right, so let me quickly walk you through the custom fonts. Notice we can use SVG files. There is an awesome tutorial that is part of the Tinkercad built-in projects. This is by Penelope. All right, so let me quickly walk through this awesome tutorial. Pick your font. There are lots of sites where you can find one. When you pick a font, it's good to get something that's thicker. It's easier to print. Also, make sure you keep track of your usage. If you're using it for personal use, you don't have to worry. But if you are selling things, you do need to make sure they're okay for commercial use. Once you have the font downloaded, you need to make it an SVG. You can do that at Convert.io. One thing to highlight is sometimes the font just won't upload correctly. It's because they are too complex and it's best to just switch to a brand new font. Now we're going to do the bring into Tinkercad. Let me show you those steps and I've got some free fonts you can use. Friends, I'm going to take you to my website, hlmodtech.com. Of course, I've got a page dedicated to Tinkercad. We've got all sorts of awesome categories, including projects dedicated to the brand new sketch tool. Of course, day one favorites, useful starters. And what I want to highlight today is a zip file of Tinkercad SVG fonts. It is called Tink Fonts. I'm going to save it to my download folder. As you can see, that was the second time I had done it. Now I have opened those downloads. I'm going to delete the one I don't need. Right click. And I'm going to just right click this one and choose extract all. And I will let it show the extracted files. So here you are, friends. These are eight fonts that you can bring in easily to the SVG tool. Friends, this is how it works. When we click on the tool, we get to pick the font we want to use. I'm going to quickly change the color just to differentiate these. And let's choose one of those files. Notice I'm in my Tink Fonts folder. And let's go through them in order. There is Monterey. Notice the red lines. That means Tinkercad is computing or thinking. And bingo, there is our fun new text called Monterey. I'm going to do Control D. And let's try a different way to do this. Now I have got the font file on top. And let's do the drag where we just drop it on top. Once again, we wait a moment for it to turn into the text that we want. And bingo, there's great vibes. How cool is that? So real quickly, those are the eight fonts. I do want to show you that with the Lego one, it only works with capital letters. Notice with a smaller letter, it gave me a different character. As you play with these, of course, you'll find out that some work and some do not. But now you've got eight new fonts that you can use in your projects for personal use. Now, once you have got a file with the different fonts you want to use, let me show you this trick. If you back up to the Tinkercad dashboard, if you start a brand new project, those fonts are not available. But if you click on your old project and choose duplicate, that project will load as a copy so you won't break anything you made. And you'll have all of those fonts already ready for you to put into a new project. I'm going to show you one more thing. If you back up to that dashboard again, you could also take your font projects and you could make them a collection. Notice I've got a folder called templates. So under designs, I would simply click on this project and I would add it to the templates collection. That way, the next time I launch it, bingo, it makes it super easy for me to find the projects that I want. Of course, I do want to highlight, you can also try these with the curved words. Don't forget, just as they get complex, it gets more tricky. So these are the Tinkercad tools, but let me show you my favorite way to add text to a Tinkercad project. This, my friends, is Canva. I generally start with the Instagram square post because I like the size. And let me show you how we do text in Canva. You simply hit the text, add a text box, and put your words in. I'm going to just type hello because that's what we were doing before. And then to pick new fonts, you can click this arrow and move through the hundreds of fonts that are built in. Now, when you check these, friends, I do want to recommend Notice you can click on the arrow and you can expand these to bold face. There are some that are going to be premium, but you can find all kinds of amazing fonts that you can then bring into Tinkercad with this step right here. So I'm going to do a screen capture. I've got a shortcut where I just hit Control-Alt-S, 
grabs that word hello, it instantly brings it into Snagit, which is an amazing tool. If you don't have Snagit, whatever you capture with is fine. I'm going to export mine as a PNG. I can click this little button and it does it automatically. And once it saves it as a JPEG, I move to pick SVG. Once here, we can hit upload a picture and then I can find that image I just created. Right here is mine. There's that hello with the funny little bricks. It gives me a potential SVG using the edges. I almost always use internal number two. I want this solid outline. Now when I hit download SVG, I'm going to save it to my downloads, keep the goofy name. I can delete these at any time. And now we're going to return to Tinkercad. And here's the moment of truth. Friends, we hit import, choose file, grab that SVG we just made. Make sure you choose the art and then I'm going to pick a size I want to work with. I'm going to choose 70 and press enter. I'm going to turn this into a quick keychain and choose import. Note it does take a moment for them to load. But bingo, there is our fun text. I do want to bump up the quality. Notice this will chisel those edges a little more. I'm going to pick a fun color. Let's go with a blue. Notice I'm on the custom so that I can pick whatever blue I want. Since I'm going to make this a keychain, I'm going to choose to make this the base. I'm going to make it two millimeters thick. And I'm going to do Control D. I'm going to move that away for a minute. And then I'm going to click this one and I'm going to change it to outer line. I'm going to make it round and I'm going to change this to four and press enter. It'll take a moment, but once it completes, you'll see that we have got a connected keychain. So I want to fill this in, right? So I'm going to do control D again, and I'm going to change the other one to silhouette. This will fill in all the places where it used to be. So there is your keychain base. I'm going to select those two and do control G. So now they are one flat piece. Now I did not have to do that. It does show these lines. Trust me, they do not show up when you print, so it's no big deal. I want to put this one on top of this. So I'm going to do C for cruise and bingo. We can just set it on top, pick a different color just because it's kind of fun. I'm going to go with a gray because of the Detroit Lions. Of course, to line them up perfectly, we can select them both. Choose L for a line and choose middle and middle. So that would be a two color keychain that would print super fast because you could pick the bottom as one color and then switch to the next color. It would not have to switch in the middle. Now a common question I get is how to print this on a multicolor printer face down. Let me show you the trick I would do for that. I'm simply gonna do control D and move this over here. I'm gonna take this one and do control D. Let's check our height. Remember this is two millimeters. So I'm gonna click on this one and I'm going to make it one millimeter and I'm going to make it a hole so you can see it down below. I'm going to click on this one real quick and hide it. And I'm going to click on that new one that we made one millimeter and I'm going to do control down arrow so you can see it is just sunk in. We could also do L for a line and make sure they're lined up to the top, which they are. If we select those two and do control G, it is now grouped and that area is cut out. Let's go back to show all. Now we can switch to this part. It is two millimeters as well. So we're going to switch it to one millimeter. And then if we do control down, it is now sunk in. And then I would simply select those two and rotate them 180 degrees. Now when you flip them 22 and a half degrees at a time, or if you hold down shift, it is 45 degrees at a time. And with that flipped, I would export these as separate pieces so that I could pick the different colors I wanted to print. I will want to stress again that these lines really don't show up once you print it. So as I wrap up, I do want to highlight this custom font text was built by a Tinkercad user, not Tinkercad itself. 
Now, a lot of people were up in arms because it was broke because they had projects where they wanted to reuse what they'd built. I 100% get that, but I also want to highlight bringing in your own text from Canva or whatever program you use to make text has the awesome advantages of being able to click on them and change the different fill modes. I use this for all sorts of amazing projects. I'll make sure I list them up above. It is great for making channels for, say, a neon sign. I prefer that technique because I have so many fonts available I don't have to convert them. I can simply take the picture of the word I want and bring it in as an SVG. And then once again, I just want to highlight, we've got these awesome things we can use once we bring it in. I find to be the fill modes, one of the coolest things that have been added to Tinkercad in the last few years. Of course, I'd love to hear in the comments which technique you prefer and why. Friends, I want to say thank you to my supporters of YouTube memberships. There are all sorts of levels for you to check out, and any support is appreciated. I also want to say thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Love how that group is growing. You can check the bit.ly up above or the link in the description. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment down below, or click subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day, and keep tinkering.